Uh, so, I'll get straight to the point. Today I'm going to be talking about the Spear 3 Munition, which is the next instalment of the Brimstone series by MDBA. Very famous missile manufacturers. And I'm considering here, and I've decided I'm going to do it, because why not? Life's too short. Um, if one is to consider the capabilities of Spear 3, they effectively combine those of classic Brimstone 2, uh, Stormbreaker, and Paveway, or Paveway 4. And that's why I've done those leading up to this one. So, let's say a Paveway 4, a Stormbreaker Smart Brom Bomb, and a Brimstone Missile walk into a pub. The bartender asks them what they'll have to drink, and the Paveway says, I will have a shot of vodka. The Stormbreaker says, I'll have neat vermouth and the Brimstone asks for a glass of gin. The Spear 3 missile then walks in and says, I'll have a Vespa Martini. And while this is possibly the worst joke ever to exist, and not really even a joke, um, it's really designed to demonstrate a point. Actually, I probably should have ignored that momentary inspiration to try to be amusing, but it demonstrates something important about Spear 3. Spear 3 is a brilliant combination of concept fundaments, of Paveway, of Stormbreaker, of Brimstone. It uses the specific targeting, select precision, uh, and just general potency of Brimstone, which, of course, it's the third installment of the Brimstone series. The power, the penetrative power of Paveway, particularly when used in succession, uh, and the standoff capability of Stormbreaker for small diameter munitions. So it may be a future weapons system, but it's a weapon system that isn't that far in the future. It's tangible. We have the concepts today, and we are just combining them. Spear 3 is 1.8 meters long and 0.18 meters in diameter. It's 100 gram, uh, kilograms in mass. So, effectively, those are its specifications, but it's going to largely follow the specifications of Brimstone 2 with improvements. As I've said, it's the third installment of the Brimstone series. SPEAR stands for Select Precision Effects and Range. And, as I've said, it inherently uses Brimstone design for the Select Precision. But SPEAR 3 takes the range part to an entirely new level of severity. And you may need to sit down for this. SPEAR 3 has a range of at least 100 kilometers. This gives it standoff status. So, with estimations at the moment, I believe, of 130 plus kilometers, Spear 3 really is about as long range as precision munitions go, or at least munitions that are designed to be this precise, not huge cruise missiles that are designed to destroy large areas or anti ship missiles. Brimstone 3. Spear 3 flies at high subsonic speed, and it uses a turbojet, as you'd sort of expect with any long-range uh, missile, and a wing kit. This wing kit is akin to Stormbreaker, and it uses both of these in order to aid its propulsion in great distances. It will probably use... Uh, the turbojet it will probably use will be that of the AGM-154 of the US. So, the AGM-154 was a sort of glide bomb, sort of the predecessor to Stormbreaker in a way, um, although very different, far chunkier, far more manual. Uh, anyway, I'm getting off, uh, off topic. It will probably use the Hamilton Sunstrand TJ-150 turbojet. Also, like Stormbreaker, um, and unlike other conventional cruise missiles, it can, due to its small mass, due to its small, uh, small diameter, it can be carried on mass. Many units can be carried at once. So, one can put it in the same category, I'd say, of smart weapon, as it allows for the maximisation of space and multiple units to be installed. Meaning, many can be fired at once from whichever platform they're launched from. Uh, although, fundamentally, without development yet, this platform is likely to just be the Typhoon and the F-35. So, probably with the F-35 it will come in alongside these Block 4 developments. And 
So, Spear 3, unlike the other Brimstone variants, is something fairly specific to RAF capability. And the plan would be to attach these to the planes, the F-35 and the Typhoon. You attach these pods, which contain sort of three units. So, I didn't even plan this. If you look at it like these pencils, what one would have... I really should get these in order. Um, you effectively... This is really rather embarrassing. Um, it would be a little like so. So you'd have two on the top and then one on the bottom. They're mounted in sort of a three. And each of these pods, these would be sort of connected like so would be mounted onto a hard point of the aircraft. So, however many hard points the Typhoon has, or the internal weapons bay of the F-35, or if you want to go beast mode for the F-35, you can also mount more of these to external hard points. The point is that you can fire a hell of a lot of these at once, and just now that it's coming across my mind, I do find it pretty charmingly American that... or... It's a pretty charming American mannerism to call it beast mode. Uh, that's fairly typical. Anyway, for the Spear 3 Seeker, it uses a multi-mode Seeker. And that's not particularly specified at the moment, but given that it's built upon the uh, foundations of Brimstone, it will make use of Brimstone's technology. So one can probably extrapolate from this that it will use the millimeter, uh, millimeter wave-seeking uh, capabilities, it will use a millimeter wave seeker as, you know, the direction seems to be with precision munitions like this, which will help it see in, uh, sort of poor visibility in poor weather conditions. And also incorporating Brimstone's sort of seeking modes allows it to have superior strike capability capability for moving targets and this makes it incredibly effective for standoff use against formations of mass armor or convoys so brimstone is designed for mass armor formations it's designed to be an anti-tank weapon i mean as is in its warhead's name it uses a high explosive anti-tank warhead um but fundamentally, being able to deploy so many of these units at once over a standoff range can really cripple uh, the enemy's fighting force because, as we know, armour is the mainstay of many militaries or a mainstay of many militaries. And considering that generally, for actually taking an area, one needs to get vehicles into that area in order to take it... Um, what that means is that they've got to have at least 130 kilometers beyond that particular objective in order to not be targeted by these Spear 3 missiles. So that gives us superior capability, or I should say the UK military, superior capability when defending, but also when attacking areas. It means that this can go far into enemy territory and take out armor, which is, again, fundamental to any fighting force if they actually want to occupy areas um, because generally one does need tanks and armored convoys one can't just send you know singular helicopters and drop five people in and say we've got this town this new spear three could also have anti-ship capabilities and this is a particularly interesting concept i think if it were seen in larger swarms in order to strike specific points so if you have, you know, you can certainly tell uh, where the most penetrative power is on a ship, where it's going to have the most effect, you can have multiple units striking multiple points in order to inflict the most damage, rather than what we have generally at the moment, which is maximal penetrative power in order to get into the ship's hull um, or any surfaces on the ship and effectively just do as much damage as humanly possible with a singular short or maybe multiple shots, shots as you'd see with uh, any torpedo or cruise missile, naval cruise missile like Tomahawk. 
Anyway, I think that's an interesting concept that one could use many of these on for sort of anti-ship capabilities, which would also, to an extent, nullify that ship's ability to use close-in weapon systems, like its phalanx, like, you know, well, there are loads of close-in weapon systems. But it would fundamentally nullify a lot of ship defensive capabilities. In regard to other improvements beyond uh, anti-ship capability, MBDA, the manufacturer, is already proposing improved uh, or improvements to the missile, including electronic warfare capability, which would be absolutely incredible. So for those who don't know, that's where one uses the electromagnetic spectrum uh, or the man manipulation of electromagnetic waves in order to uh, disable enemy communication, or that's my dad sneezing, uh, or just general equipment fun functionality. You massively disable any enemy's fighting force without having to use, I guess, destructive methods, which is, or at least those which endanger human life, which is, you know, a potential for warfare. And that can be fairly important. It certainly diminishes civilian or collateral damage. Um, and so that could be incredibly important, particularly if you're using it over the 130 kilometer range, you can penetrate deep into enemy territory and strike high value electronic targets in order to effectively disable any fighting force. And if you can send multiple of these units to multiple uh, hubs or nexus points within any communication network, you can shut down a fighting force, you know, like that. Uh, and perhaps not more importantly, but more vividly in my mind, MBDA, in regard to improving capabilities, is also envisioning a swarm mode for these munitions. Now, that's fairly open to interpretation, and it sounds pretty damn terrifying, but what one would expect from that is you'd fire a salvo of these... I'm not sure whether you can use the word salvo for air-launched missiles, but we're going to use it anyway. You would fire a salvo, a large group of missiles over a long range in order to seek out precision targets, um, either plural targets or by striking at key points in infrastructure or ships or just generally larger targets, um, or, you know, hitting structurally integral, tactical, in, tactically integral larger constructs utilised by enemy, enemy forces. In any case, the idea with the swarm is that they would communicate, they'd work together, like these UAS systems we've been seeing, in order to confuse the enemy, in order to uh, hit targets with maximal efficiency, in order to uh, hinder and confuse defensive systems. To put it simply, and to finish off this video, uh, the last thing you would ever want is to be looking into the sky and see what looks like a swarm of flies getting bigger and bigger, and bigger, because by that time it's probably too late, um, and it's probably been launched an hour ago from 130 plus kilometers away, and there's not really much way of defending from a swarm of Spear 3 missiles. We'll see. Anyway, I am incredibly excited for Spear 3, and I wonder what its capabilities are going to be in the future. That'll be it.